What went into it to getting this game moved to a weekend end of February this year? Well, you know, in the past we played uh, Princeton and then an ACC team, and we were scheduled for two ACC teams this year. Uh, so it was just too much to ask. Plus, we were traveling to Carolina right after playing Cornell midweek. Mm -hmm. So it was one of the few uh, weekends that we could. Uh, we're trying to get the game back to a weekend, and it was the first weekend that we both had available to do it. It could change next year depending on everybody's schedule. What can it do for this uh, rivalry to get it off that Tuesday and onto a weekend where maybe more people can uh, watch this game? Yeah, I think it's uh, you know it's definitely a weekend game. Pretty hard to prepare for you know Cornell or Cornell for Syracuse uh, midweek between maybe two Ivy League games for them or two. ACC teams for us. So it's a good place to start and uh, we'll see going forward how we can keep them on a weekend. And I guess the preparation's a little different than normal because usually it's mid-season but they haven't played a game yet so what are you going off of to get ready for them? Really uh, you know last year's team we know they uh, return a number of uh, seniors this year, returning players uh, you know, with Linter and, uh, and Donovan coming back, and then you've got uh, Busick, which is you know, maybe one of the top midfielders in the country, he definitely is. Uh, you throw Hogan and maybe Edmonds coming up from attack or another uh, younger player in there, and, and we'll see. They've got a very good returning team. They've been comfortable in the Carrier Dome, so uh, we're gonna give it a, we've got to come ready to play. Coach, what did you see from JT Forkin on Saturday? I know he, he made the transition from midfield to attack. How seamlessly yeah. do you kind of think he did that? Well, you know, as far as Dodgers go, he's he's dodging very hard. He gets to his left hand, and uh, he's you know he's not you know he's not six foot three. He's you know he's probably five nine ish. So it's hard for big defenders to get you know their hands on his hips and get him out. And uh, he's got a nose for the goal, and he's, he's playing very well. Mm -hmm. And would you go as far to say maybe he, he's the fourth attack behind Randy, Kevin, and Dylan? Yeah, he's he's getting there. He's getting there. He has to learn uh, the other aspects. Aspects of the game, you know, between all the offenses. But as far as a, as, a, as Dodger, he could easily be. Yes, Coach, uh, can you talk me through, you know, what the experience is like losing Ralph? I know it was some financial issues, but you know, getting him back and what was that whole experience just like for you? Well, it was tough to lose him. You know, he's a under 19 USA player, uh, so he he came to us, uh, you know, with high accolades. And it's, uh, you know, when he left the way he did, uh, you know, for the finances, we understood for the family and we didn't have scholarship money left to, to give him at the time. And now things have worked out for him. So really uh, a little bit of a surprise to have him back, yeah. but a nice surprise. What are you kind of expecting from this year or next year too? Well, you know, it was hard to uh, practice because we didn't know whether he was going to be eligible to play or not. So it was uh, uh, some good news when he could come back. And uh, we definitely give him reps in that, you know, the top four defenders. And I think he's doing good. I think he's uh, picked things up pretty quickly. Things haven't changed too much from when he was here before. Uh, but he gives us another cover guy and, and maybe maybe a best matchup for a certain type of attackman. When did you find out he'd be eligible? Uh, what was it, the week before? Uh, I think the week before our first. Uh, second scrimmage. Exactly, okay. yeah. Yep. Thanks. <clears throat> Coach, can you talk about the challenges that uh, Busick and Donovan will present for your defense this weekend? Well, you know, two of the top players in the country, and, uh, you know, Busick is, uh, uh, he's a man-child out there. He goes very hard to the goal. If they can get the ball to him in clearing situations, he'll go to the goal. Uh, he's a handful one-on-one. -on -one. you got to slide to him early. Uh, you always have to be aware of where he is. Uh, Donovan, I think, is, a, is a, turned into a pretty good Dodger, and he gets a lot of other players uh, in the Cornell offense involved. He's uh, got great vision, can find open players, and him becoming more of an effective Dodger makes him that much more difficult to cover. And Cornell has a couple of really strong, uh, close close defenders in Stevens and Peters. Can you talk about how important it is for your offense to get a challenge this week? Yeah, yeah, we uh, we watched them last year, and I know, uh, you know, I. I know Stevens was maybe a little bit ahead of it last year. Then Peters at the end played very strong. So two good ones there. And they've got a, you know, a local freshman here that could see some time. Uh, Pulver from uh, Fayetteville Manlius. We thought he was one of the top, if not the top, close defensemen in the country as a freshman. Coach, the Siena head coach said after the game he made a point for his defense that they wanted to get more pressure on Kevin and Randy, which may have left Dylan open uh, a little bit more in the game. Did you kind of think that was the case? Oh, definitely. I thought they were more focused on the attack than they were in the midfield, and I think that's why you saw the uh, the range of scoring from our midfielders and, you know, Akeem having a, a goal and four assists, finding open people, getting him involved more. And there were times where they just didn't want Kevin to touch the ball, but, you know, Kevin was effective in other ways. He set some good picks and uh, got free uh, by you know, setting picks for others, and somebody set a pick for him, and, and we got some matchups. So they were able to do to produce, but it was great to see that the midfielders and the rest of the offense were so productive, putting up so many points. What do you think Dylan does well to exploit defenses? 
I, I think he's a really smart player. I, I think of uh, maybe all the attackmen, he's as good with both hands as any. So he can come up the left side, he can come up the right side. He's really good off the ball. He's certainly a, a capable dodger, especially getting the, the third defenseman most of the time. So I think it's just his overall game. He rides, he understands the, the plays, the man ups. Uh, and he's, uh, you know, I think he's probably the most effective guy on the left side for us. With Kevin and Randy having big games against Cornell last year, are you kind of expecting maybe the same thing? There might be more pressure on them, which might leave Donahue over? Yeah, I mean, it could be. We just don't know. You know, they're, uh, they have some similar players back. Uh, you know, we won the game last year. Whether they decide to go with the same defensive package or not remains to be seen, and that's our job as coaches to watch that, especially early in the game, uh, to see what they're doing and make adjustments. And they also threw a fair amount of zone defense against us last year, so we've got to make sure that our zone offense is ready to go.